Welcome, I'm Ingrid Carlson, and if you have not been told today, you are loved. I am so thankful that you are here today, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about these page ruffles. Today we are doing another scrap buster, and you're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. I don't know about you, but I have a ton of leftover scrap pieces of paper specifically from one of my Christmas kits I think it was winter wonderland and it's like a pink uh, Christmas kit but I accidentally printed this like several times and I had like a big stack of the printables and so um, they are sitting over I have a bin where I have all of my remnants or any extra that I have from kits that I haven't used and so I decided to use them up today and I wanted to show you some paper ruffles that we can make using your discarded prints so I'm going to go ahead and off camera cut away the excess border on here and I will be back to show you. I'm back and I've taken all the borders off. I also grabbed some avocado dyed paper, some coffee dyed paper, and even some, I think this is avocado dyed book page. I also grabbed, this is from, I believe both of these are from Primrose. And I also, grabbed some old sewing pattern and on this one it's going to be a little different because the paper is so thin so all I'm going to do is take this paper and I'm going to cut it into strips I want to make sure to cut some strips thicker than others So you can see these are thicker, this one's thinner, and I'm going to do the rest of these. Okay, here are all my scraps. I'm just going to cut that and that off. And so now we're just going to start pleating. And I'm just going to do each piece separately. So depending on how much you want your, like the length that you want your ruffle to be at the end is how much you'll pleat. So for example, if I wanted to have closer pleats, but I'm using up a lot of the paper, then I would do it like this. And you could see that big sheet just went smaller. Now, if I want to make it smaller, I'm folding over much less and I'm also 
waiting a lot longer in between to fold over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these and I'm gonna go ahead and put you on fast forward um, and I'm gonna do all different types. I'm gonna do some that are like this. I might even leave some that have a bigger space in the middle. They might go a little crooked, they might go straight and so we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, now that we have all of our little squigglies here, then we are going to run them through the sewing machine. So first I want to tell you that when you're going to do that, you're going to want the folded edges facing you. So when you are feeding something through the sewing machine, the sewing machine is going in this direction. So you want the pleats going down, that way it'll be easier later. If not, you'll have to keep stopping it, possibly. You might be able to get it like this, but this is the easier way. And I'm gonna go ahead and run all of these. Then we're going to talk about how we can use them in our projects and we'll be back. When I start sewing, since I have so many pieces, I'm actually going to run a stitch through to grab the next piece. And also note while I am while I'm sewing, I'm actually using my fingers to hold down the pleats or press them down. And if some of them don't go, that's okay. you can see back here there's a little bit of thread that way I don't have to cut each one that I'm doing until I decide what I'm gonna do with them so I'm gonna go ahead and run all of these and then come back and show you how I'm gonna do the pattern paper because it's so thin instead of adding glue or anything I'm gonna do it directly at my sewing machine so I'll be right back Okay, here is my strip that I've already made, and now I'm gonna show you how to do the sewing paper. So since it's so thin, I'm actually going to gather it on the machine itself. I'll start the first pleat out. And then as it's going, then I'm going to just pleat it. 
and you can go as fast or as slow. I would suggest that when you're first starting out, you slow it down. And then as you get comfortable with it, then you can start going faster. So here is our pleated sewing pattern ruffles. So now we've got all of our fabrics that are sewn together. And so now you can, this will give you actually a way to store them as well. If you want, you could roll this up like this and then keep it on the side of your desk. It even looks cute like this, doesn't it? And you can keep it on the side of your desk and when you need it, you just take a little piece. And I'm going to grab my journal. this. I'm going to grab some other pieces and these all kind of go together. I'm going to grab this one. And then I'm going to grab the book page. And now I have a little ruffle that I think would look so cute on the edge of my journal. But I'm going to take it one extra step. I'm going to grab it here. I'm going to add a staple just underneath one of my pleats so that this will st stay put while I'm messing with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start roughing up the edges. And this is a great time too. So for example, this one, it's not straight at the bottom. If you wanted to, you could cut that little piece and then straighten it out a little. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it down to the edge of my booklet or journal. <laughs> that and of course if you're doing this at home then feel free to let this sit even put a book on top of it the longer it stays in one place with the glue the better the adhesion will be I'm going to add a little bit of glue not necessarily I like the ends to be kind of open but I want some of this bulk to lay down so just gonna hold that. They coordinate with each other. And now this can be a journal page. This can have a, a little book page here, can go in here. And um, there's just endless possibilities here. I kinda really like that. So I think I'm going to
I'm going to take this and extend it. And if you didn't catch these little book pages that we did, I'll have that linked down below. It's in my Scrap Buster series that I'm doing right now. And here we can actually make another pocket. Or you could just glue it down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to make this into three pockets. pushing down on where the glue is. And now look at the cute page that we made using two of the scrap busters and look how fast it came together. I have this tag book that I made and I'm just gonna use it as an example. I'm gonna grab one of these thin ladies. I'm gonna take that and just pop her in here. And so you can see that the possibilities are just limitless. You can add whatever you want. And like I said, you have another little pocket here, but that little ruffle is just the icing on an already delectable cake that just takes your pages to the next level. And you have so many pieces here that you can make so many pages. And if your page is bigger than this, then you can take the ones that are similar, like these two, and you can line them up together. And now I've made a bigger page. If you need it to be even bigger, you can, I don't know if I have another one of those, but let's pretend, I mean, it just keeps going on. Or you can play with the design a little bit and make, something like that where you have three different pieces together but they all coordinate so um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this project I think that this is pre pretty much the easiest one that we've done yet with the scrap busters and you get to use all of your beautiful papers that you have that you've been storing for a, an occasion this is great and then you can have it in a bin or in a folder or something and then when you're ready to or like I said you can wind it up and have it really cute on your desk and then when you're ready to create something and you just need a little pop of something on your page this is a great little topper to add that will take your page to the next level so thank you so much for being here thank you for spending your afternoon with me I hope that you enjoyed the video please remember if you did like comment share all the things and if you're not already subscribed you should definitely do so right now because i'm going to be doing more of these scrap busters or mass making projects so that we can get ready for this year to be the year where we create beautiful things until next time love you bye